Hello and welcome to Pots and Trowels. This week we're in the greenhouse and we're going to start by sowing some sweet pea seeds and then we're going into the veg plot to start forcing the rhubarb. One of my favourite summer flowers is sweet peas. They are lovely in the garden, but they also make really, really good cut flowers. In fact, if you grow them in the garden, the more you cut them, the more they will flower. So it is essential that you go out regularly and pick them. You can sow them in the autumn if you want to, and that's when lots of people do. It's a very traditional time, but you don't have to do it then. So again, if you haven't done it, don't worry. You haven't missed the boat. There's still bags and bags of time to do it. Lots of lovely, lovely different varieties out there that we can sow, single colours, mixed coloured, centred colours, all sorts of things. Um, so get yourself a packet of seed and get sowing. So very simple to do. What I'm going to do is start them off in some small pots. These are three and a half inch pot terracotta pots. Plastic's absolutely fine, whatever you've got. Um, and we're going to sow them in the greenhouse. Although the plants are hardy, the seeds need just a little bit of warmth just to get them going. So if you've got no warmth at all, maybe wait a few weeks until the, the air temperature starts to gradually war warm up. But now is fine in here, this is frost free. So we've got our pots and I'm going to fill them with compost. This is a, a, um, a peat free compost with some Johninis mixed in with it. So I'm just going to fill those roughly level with the compost, not firm them down at this stage just strike it off level with my hand. That will give them a good start. Got a packet of seed. This is a, um, a giant waved mix. So it's got lovely pinks and mauves and whites in there. And they're nice sized seed in there. Lovely fresh seed. And what I do is sow about 10 seeds to each of those pots. Some people do struggle to germinate sweet peas because they have got a very hard seed coat on them. So there are a couple of things that you can do. You can soak them in water overnight for 12 hours in tepid water, drain them off and sow them. You can use a little nail file and just take a little bit of that hard seed coat off or use a sharp knife and just take a little chip of the seed coat off. That just allows moisture into a germination. But I always think if you buy new seed and it's fresh, then it should germinate without doing any of that. So I tend to sow them without any treatment whatsoever. However. So what I'm going to do is space sow them on the surface of this pot here. So I'm going to put about 10 to 12 seeds on there and just evenly sow them. We do that so that they've all got basically the same amount of space to grow. Um, then we'll get a nice even batch of seedlings. Now I've completely lost count there. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We've got a bit of a gap over here. So we're going to finish up with 12 seeds in this pot. OK, the spare go in there for the next pot. And then all I'm going to do is use my finger and just push them down so that they're in the compost like that. And then just a little bit more compost and top that off. And that is it. A label in there. This one comes with a label anyway, but if not write the label so you know what they are. Give those a drink so that the compost is nice and wet, and then put them somewhere frost-free. If you've got a little propagator, that's perfect, but a frost-free greenhouse or even a windowsill is fine. But don't water them again until the little seedlings start to appear, because there is a tendency to overwater them and they'll rot before they germinate. So we need to keep them moist, but not soggy. So give them a good water, and when the seedlings are through, if they look a bit dry, give them a bit more. And what we're going to do with these is let the seedlings get to maybe three or four four inches tall. We don't want 12 in that one pot and when they get to that height we'll knock them out, pot them up individually so we get lovely strong plants and they can go into the garden in April. But for now get the seed in, wait for it to germinate and it won't be that long before you're picking your own fresh sweet peas from the garden. If you like uh, forced rhubarb, which is that lovely, tender, pink, sweet rhubarb that we get in the spring, now's the time to force a clump if you've got some in your garden. Needs to be a clump that's been established for at least two years, possibly three years, so it's got a big root on there. Um, and it's got to be one that you didn't force last year because it weakens it, so you need to give it a year or so to rest after you've forced it. And there's a clump here, you wouldn't believe it, but this is a clump uh, of rhubarb and it's just starting to come to life. Some are much earlier than others, but there's some nice big buds 
starting and this is the clump itself here so that's what we want to cover i've put some compost around it to give it a good mulch and then i'm using one of these forcing pots but you could just use an old dustbin or something but these are the traditional terracotta ones and i'm just going to place that over there bed it down the idea is we've got to exclude all the light and it's the fact that it's in the dark and it's slightly warmer in there that it encourages it into growth so we'll put the lid on that's there so that we can have a little sneaky look in a few weeks time but for now we put the tut on there leave it and forget about it until we come to pick it in about six to eight weeks time so thank you for watching Pots and Trials and giving us your continued support by sharing the videos on Facebook and on YouTube. We'll be back next week, but it's going to be something very different. So stay tuned for that one.